this knife could last you a very long time, even looking good. So it's a knife you could use for quite some time and it continuing to just look the same, even after multiple, multiple sharpenings, lots of sharpenings. So, and even after multiple sharpenings or lots of sharpenings, it's gonna stay nice and thin for you. So, bang, Neves Knives, I'm Jared, and we have the review on the Civivi Knox. Now this is Civivi's first frame lock knife, but there's something so simple and simplistic about this knife and it's ex so extremely well done in so many ways that it's pretty impressive, um, especially for the price. Now, Civivi did send me this, and I appreciate them supporting Neve's Knives with uh, content and not asking for a good review or anything like that, just to, to be honest. So I really appreciate that. And this Civivi right here, I think is going to be... Uh, pretty popular because it winds up falling into the categories of a great size for many many people it is a small compact edc knife with a beautiful well done hollow grind civivi's grinds are in my opinion some of the best out there they are very even they look really good they do great choils great blade shapes it's you know, one of the most important part about your knife is going to be the grind and what that knife is for. And this knife makes sense because even though the, the handle construction, there is no milling in it. So it, to me, a knife like this, it doesn't really matter if it's not made out of copper. It's not going to be too heavy. It does have a little heft to it because it is steel, but it's not heavy by any means necessary. But it's, it's such a small knife that you know, you're not going to get the best ergos out of it. Of course you're not. However, since the grind is done so nice and thin with this nice deep hollow grind, the blade is going to have extreme cutting performance, which is going to make up for the ergos, which makes sense in this case. So getting to the ergos, you know, the, the handle, you know, I do feel the clip quite a bit because it's a deep carry clip. You can expect that. But I can technically get a about a three and a half finger grip on it. You do have this little choil up here, which is basically for just one, you know, one uh, knuckle, I guess you could say. And it's relatively comfortable considering the size and how thin it is, how short it is this way. I find that I'm using it a lot like this like this you know and obviously like this now you know with the ergos the way they are being so thin and compact and small it's nice that the blade makes up for that with the cutting performance because this thing cuts really nice the blade in geometry winds up passing through materials extremely easy no problems at all with uh, the geometry i'm actually very impressed with the geometry very impressed with the the grind and how even even it is behind the edge thickness is around 15 thousandths thick so that <laughs> that's really nice especially considering that it's you know underneath a uh, hollow grind so the blade stock thickness coupled with the thinness behind the edge makes it perform extremely extremely well now, coming down to this, sharp, or you know what, we'll get into sharpening here in a minute. The, the utility cuts, it's a drop point blade. Now, you see the swedge up on top, which is going to help with the, the strength of the tip because you can see the thickness go all the way down almost to the very, very tip. So, it also makes it where you're going to have a very, very um, utilitarian tip or a precision guided tip. This tip is going to be like a needle. However, you know, even though it's not strong and it can break under pressure, it's not that kind of knife. So it doesn't matter. This knife is going to give you the precision little cuts that you require in a knife like this. So 
you know, because this knife is the size it is, you know, this is the best case scenario for a knife of this size. And man, does that tip work good. It is a little laser. You can use it to pick things. You could use it to pick out splinters. And of course you can use it to, to you know, make utility cuts and it's gonna do it extremely well. And you have a lot of control because of the compact handle the round butt end of the handle, you know, it nestles right in your hand for, for lots of pressure pointing down where you'll be able to get really good utility cuts. Now, just looking at the construction, it's everything's the same color. Everything blends in really nicely and matches. It looks really, really nice. Now the clip is reversible. However, it is not inset, but it does have flat screws. And, you know, Svee's clips work great. So this is another one. It works great in and out of the pocket. No problems at all. And I, I like Svee's clips. Yes, they look simple because they are. But sometimes simple is just what works. And this does work great. And like I said, it is reversible for the lefties. The hardware's T8s, aside from the T6 clip screws, but the, the construction of the handle is all T8s. I love to see that, love to see that. Two standoffs, which has, you know, a strong build to it, especially being that it is steel. Now, getting to the action. So the lock bar has a little bit of jimping on it, or a little bit of traction, I could say. Very, very smooth, extremely smooth. The flipper tab, it is on ceramic bearings, by the way, with a ceramic detent. You can see the flipper tab has nice gripping on it. So it flips very, very reliably, very, very well. Not a strong detent and not a light detent. It is well-tuned. If you put your finger on the lock bar, it will make it a little bit stronger, but I don't ever get any death lock whatsoever. So it does come out very fast. All right, so the lock bar does have traction on it and the detent ball is not early, but it's also not crazy late. You can let it hit your finger and then it's past the detent. So you can let it do that. It's not false shutty or anything, but you can, with a little encouragement, get it with just one little slap and it'll drop all the way down. However, like I said, it's not false shutty or anything. It's a very light blade, so you can't, you don't really expect it to be like that. And if you hit the detent ball, you can kind of use it like a double detent knife and just slap it forward. Or, you, like I said, you can just let it drop, hit your finger, and then finish it off with one little bit of encouragement. But it is very, very smooth and very easy to just slap it forward with your finger, even if you're past the detent, because it's so smooth. Now, getting to some negative things before we finish off with some things I want to say about this knife. So, really, there's nothing really bad about this knife. I will say when I first got it, the, the probably the biggest negative I've seen so far is that the pivot came loose. It came loose rather quickly as soon as I got it. Within right after my first impressions, the screw backed out and I tried to tighten it up and it continued to keep backing out every time I flipped it. The tolerances are really tight on this thing, which is going to put pressure, you know, going out. So I did Loctite it. Now, after Loctiting it, I did not give it any time to set. And I was hoping that it would just, you know, take care of itself and it did come back loose. So I did take, uh, take the, the pivot out again put some Loctite on it. And the next time I let it set up, I let it set up for 24 to 48 hours, basically about 36 hours. And now it's perfectly just fine. It has not came loose since it is very tight. Um, like I said, the centering is really good. Aside from that, you know, there's really no negatives. This is extremely well done. One thing that mo a lot of people might come up with is that it's stainless steel. P you know, we are in a time where we are impressed with our materials, and that is going to be the one downfall with this knife is that it's not titanium. But it's also in the price range, 
where you would normally see, which we'll do some size comparisons here in a second, where you would normally see their steel liner locks. So is it that big of a deal? I mean, I don't think so because for the same price, you're going to get a stainless steel liner lock with g10 over it so in this case it just takes off the scales that would normally sit on the outside and makes it a frame lock and a well-built one so i don't know if that's a great argument or not um but we do like to be impressed don't we so you know it's not going to be the most impressive materials for the money, but the build is here. The quality is here. And, you know, you still have a great steel for the blade and, you know, it, it's going to be a great little secondary or primary user for, for anybody. So it works. It works great. Now, the, the other little details that I really like about this thing, the stop pin great size stop pin. This is actually a large stop pin for a knife of this size. We have T8 construction. So the build strength and quality is on, is really, really good. It's really high. Now, when you look at the deep carry construction with the reversible clip, flat screws, you know, something we all ask for. The detent, well-tuned, great, great action. Then you get into the most important part about this knife, which is the blade, which I did sharpen this knife. This edge took an incredibly sharp edge. I sharpened it on my Veneve Diamond Stones and it took a very, very sharp edge. Now, um, the steel itself, Nitro V Steel, Nitro V Steel is very similar to AEBL and Sandvik 14C28N steel. The one difference between the AEBL is going to be the nitrogen and vanadium in the steel. Now, personally, AEBL, it's an okay steel, but I'm personally not the biggest fan of AEBL. However, this to me is better. And I say that because when I sharpen AEBL, AEBL, it doesn't take okay so abl does really good very thin like razor blade style um edge or blades you know thin thin grinds which nitro v will too however when i sharpen it abl doesn't get the level of sharpness that nitro v gets nitro v to me feels a lot more similar to 14c28n than abl even though their their similarities are, are a lot. They have a lot of similarities. Um, it can be um, HRC to, I think, 64. Obviously, it can be less than that, but I think it can go up to 64 HRC. And it has a very fine microstructure that even though 14C28N has bigger carbides, they're, the micro um, structure is still very similar. And... In my opinion, it takes a very good polished edge. So sharpening it, you can get a ridiculously sharp edge with Nitro V that I don't feel that I get from AEBL. That's why I kind of put it more into the category of 14C28M. Now, when uh, using it, it's nice and tough. It holds a great edge. I mean, it's not going to give you the edge retention of, you know, higher steels, you know, or, you know, more um, super steels or anything like that. But for the value, for what you're getting, I mean, I like I said, I find it very similar to, to for, almost as much as 14C. I do think 14C28N does hold a better edge i do think it does get a little bit better edge retention however i'm not saying that this is it's not far off this is pretty similar um with the edge retention now the toughness is going to be really good on this where they can get these nice thin hollow grinds out of it so it's going to shine with the type of grinds we have here and it seems and feels like it's heat treated pretty well so i'm happy with nitro v steel on a knife like this i think it suits a knife like this pretty good now 
there's um you know everybody has their own opinion on different steels and i'm not saying it's my favorite steel or anything like that but i think it's it's a good choice and i'm actually happier to see that steel rather than d2 i think it's going to be easy to sharpen it takes an incredibly sharp edge even with a high polish and it's going to be plenty tough and you know when you have grinds as thin as this it's going to sharpen up incredibly fast and very easily so not only is the steel easy to sharpen but the grind makes it a dream to sharpen and then when you mix it with a good plunge grind a good choil a great blade shape it it's fun it's easy to sharpen um for freehanders you know the one thing is going to be that it is small you know um but that also means it's going to be less steel and especially when it's this thin so yeah sharpening it was very easy sharpened up incredibly fast um very well went through the stones really good took a polish really good deburred really good and um yeah so and the edge retention you know it's been decent it's not like i said it's not going to get the craziest amount of edge retention but it's it's really decent and it drops back pretty well too i notice it um it definitely has good response to stropping and honing so you, you're going to be able to keep up with it in between sharpenings pretty easy not to mention the stain resistance that comes with it so it's going to have great stain resistance so you're not going to have to worry about corrosion as long as you keep up with it you know obviously you know you always still want to keep your blades nice and dry you know and things like that but it's not going to be something you're going to have to worry about so much as like d2 or something you know to that end it's going to be very easy to keep up with as long as you know you do keep up with it basically you know it's it's not going to be something you have to worry about then when we look at the grind look at this satin finish it is very nice i mean it looks very nice it's very even from side to side the plunge grind is way back here you see where it starts it ends right here so you have so much life to sharpen out of this knife this knife could last you a very long time even looking good so it's a knife you could use for quite some time and it continuing to just look the same even after multiple multiple sharpenings lots of sharpenings so and even after multiple sharpenings or lots of sharpenings it's going to stay nice and thin for you so yeah it's not a big knife no it's not like a, a full size um pm2 or a sabivi backlash or something but it is very capable for its size. And yeah, I, like I said, I think this thing is very, very well done. The jimping is good jimping. The kind of jimping that does give you, you know, plenty of traction, but it's not overly aggressive. Now, it is a little early back here. You know, sometimes I like seeing the, the jimping a little bit more forward. Uh, but, you know, this isn't a knife that you're begging for jimping on anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. And it's definitely not a negative um especially since the jimping is well done i think sabivi does a good job with their jimping so all in all the stainless steel construction is it going to take scratches and stuff well it's got a beautiful stone wash on it so it's not going to be horrible with scratches you know yeah it's still a tool if you drop it it will get scratched but you know it has such a tool look to it that scratches really don't look bad on a knife like this you know i guess that's subjective you know, it depends on how you look at it. However, I think this thing's extremely, extremely well done and is in the same size category as the Civivi Elementum, as the QSP Penguin, as the Civivi Pintail, as the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Also as the Civivi McKenna, which are all great sizes for, like I said, you know, for just a basic EDC knife that you're going to use, that's going to come out of your pocket to make the cut and go back in your pocket. And in that case, this is a well done tool. Very, very nice. And yeah. And also one thing I really like, I, I want to uh talk about this lock up when i lock it up the geometry is very nice on this lock face 
you can actually hear it. It has a really cool clicky sound to it. And you can actually see it lock up. Very solid, even if I go extremely slow. The geometry is very, very nice on this lock face. So, uh, would I say this is Civivi's best EDC knife? No, I would not. However, if you are in the, the three inch range where you need a three inch knife, I think this is one of the better options for you. Now, if you don't like frame locks, then, you know, obviously something like the Civivi Elementum might be a better choice for you. But if you really like the Civivi Elementum and just the tool aspect of this knife is what you're looking for, this is a great, great option. It is definitely um, one of the better EDC knives in this size range that I've seen when I'm looking at it from a tool aspect, a user's aspect, a sharpening aspect, in the pocket aspect, all of those things. No, it's not going to be the most comfortable hand, but it makes up for it in geometry. So it just kind of, you know, obviously the more ergonomic a knife is also the more the bigger it's going to be, the thicker it's going to be, the heavier it's going to be. So in this case, you know, it shrinks it down to a very small compact package, but you know, you're, you're going to get the performance out of it. All in all, I think it's well done. I think it's really nice. I think that it's a, a great tool. Is it the most beautiful knife in the world? Um, no. Is it going to be a, is it a, you know, something that uh, just impresses everybody? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, it just depends on what impresses them. In my opinion, for as a tool, this is a great tool. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.